This episode of Moola Moola was brought to you by Just Health. Hello world, this is a frugal millennial and on this episode of Moola Moola, I'm joined with Anne, who I met on a Facebook property investing group. I love what she does, so I decided to have her on the show. Welcome to the show, Anne. How are you going? I'm fantastic, thanks. How are you? Pretty good. So tell us, what do you do for a living? Well, I run a, uh, a tutoring business oh. and we, we run two centres simultaneously. So we tutor um, English and maths to kindergarten all the way to HSC. And how did you get into that? Well, it was a lot of a draw, really. So I was doing medical science and I was working in a private clinic for a few years. Um, it wasn't my thing. Yeah. So something was wrong there, mm. but I didn't know what to do. Yeah. As a um, casual job, however, on the weekends, I decided to pick up um, tutoring and then it just hit me. Mm -hmm. I love it. And do you employ people or is this just run by yourself? Yeah, we, we run, um, we employ a large, um, yeah, Group of people. Kind of people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. How many people are in your organization? Uh, about 20. 20 wow. Staff. Amazing. Wow. Yeah. Is this your dream so job? I, it's my dream business. Absolutely. Now, as I mentioned, we met on Facebook and I actually saw a post about you making money by flipping a house. Can you tell us a little bit more about house flip and is this something you do on a regular basis? Yeah, so I always want to make more money. I had this idea that house flipping is the way to go. So um, when I was 26 years old, that was about eight years ago, I bought my first house to flip without any research. No data. Um, I did not know what I was doing. I didn't speak to the right people. I went out and bought a really run-down property at auction. That was the... That was a no-go zone. So I ended up overpaying $100,000. Wow. Um, I got so emotional. Uh, then I rehabbed it and I put in another 40000 mm -hmm. When it was all ready, um, I held it for a year because, you know, I wanted the um, capital gains tax exemption and I put it on auction. Mm -hmm. It was a flop. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so... It wouldn't. It got passed in, and I was like devastated. Yeah. Um, my loan was so big that I maxed out my serviceability, and I couldn't go forward. I was just pretty much stuck. Mm. Um. So what I did next was to help me with the um, rental yield. I constructed a granite flat at the back. Nice. Yeah. Immediately, it became positively um, geared. Mm -hmm. Uh, I moved in with my partner mm -hmm. at his place mm -hmm. and I stopped investing. Yeah, it was a disaster the first, the first time around. Yeah. And I realized why. It was because I didn't do the research leading up to that. So in 2019, um, you know, because my business could afford me to work very little hours. I do about 15, 20 hours a week on it. Wow. Okay. That's good. Um, I want, yeah, I wanted to do something else on the side to occupy my time and I decided to look at commercial investing. I want, when I achieve my passive income that allows me to continue to start my flipping challenge again, uh, in 2020, that was the last year in the midst of the COVID, I purchased a really rundown home just below the market. Um, so it was for sale, private treaty, no option this time. Was that during the dip? Because we went through a dip last year. Yep, it was during the dip. Nice. I had the money ready and um, it was pretty scary because everyone told me don't buy right now. Don't know, you just got to listen to your gut feeling. So I bought it for 860000 in Sydney mm -hmm. and I spent about fifty dollars to $60,000 rehabbing it. That's I did everything good. Else. Yeah. yeah, I got the whole thing. It was a double story. Mm -hmm. um, the finishes were medium to low. It wasn't high end because mm -hmm. I wanted to lease it out. Mm -hmm. And lo and behold, within four months, obviously thanks to the market rising as well, um, eight sixty it was worth like one point one million. And that's the agent calling me back saying, "Look, I found your buyer. Are you interested?" And I'm like, 
I've just signed up for four months. I, have you even seen my rehab work? And he's like, no, I haven't. I, I'm, I was going to offer you 1.1 based on what I'm back then. So I haven't owned it for a year yet. Just holding for yeah. 12 months. Yeah. Yeah. And the market seems like it's just so hot right now and it's going to keep going up until, I guess, the RBA increases the rates, which is predicted to be in 2024. So mm. you've got a while yet. <laughs> yeah, and, I think um, whenever you can, buy. When yeah. you can afford to, go for it. And what's happened to your first property? Did you sell that? Um, so I'm putting on auction as we speak because now is the right time to sell. Um, so I bought it eight years ago for 975 um now it's finally got up to 1.5 million hmm. do you think it's very addictive flipping houses yes. <laughs> um money saved in the bank really doesn't do any good that's right that's right yeah so um i'm not a really good saver um whatever i make i tend to just throw it back into investing um so even though now, for example, I'm waiting for the 12 month period before I can put the Sydney home for sale, mm -hmm. the one I bought last year, mm -hmm. I've already purchased another yeah. in yeah. the process. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. But it, it's continuous. Yeah. Can we go back to your flip? What did you mm -hmm. actually do to the house in terms of your, okay. your budget? 50,000 was it that you spent? Yes. It's very hands on because, um, the whole point was to give myself a, a side hustle where I can um, keep myself busy. Yeah. And it's really fun. So um, my dad is very handy as well. So we'll do it together. And when it comes to electrical, plumbing, um, et cetera, we call people, uh, you know, specialists in. Yeah. But we, we pretty much rip it, all the old carpets. Mm -hmm. We tiled everything. Wow. We put in new timber flooring, uh, laminate. And new kitchen, new bathrooms, uh, new windows. We want to open some spaces. Yeah, so pretty much uh, an, uh, the whole thing, 100%. Nothing right. was kept. Would you recommend renovation to someone who is not hands-on? Uh, not so much, no. Right. Because contractors, um, fees and uh, etc. can charge quite a bit. That It's going to be really expensive. Yeah. But I think, um, just like myself, though, um, even my first flip, I was hands-on and still, because I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't have en enough good advice. You can fall into the um, trap quite easily. Mm -hmm. But you've got to start somewhere. Yeah. So my listeners know me as a, a buy and hold type of investor because I don't have to pay capital gains tax waste money on holding the property and I don't have to waste time selling and then buying another house. What element of flipping do you find appealing? Mm. To me, flipping is like a project. It's really exciting to get a new project, complete it, and then move on. Yeah. yeah. But the one thing I have trouble with is actually serviceability. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, when you buy properties, you can hold on to them for a long period of time, but you have to wait until the equity grow. Otherwise, it's a long process. Yeah. Yeah. For me, I want an instant. I want to flip one to two houses a year um, and keep going, keep the ball rolling. As you mentioned, you get quite emotional with your flips. Uh, have you learned anything from that? Are you less emotional these days? Absolutely. Um, it's all about the figures at the end of the day, uh, but it's only tricky because you were so hands-on and you watched the transformation. Um, but yeah, at the end of the day, it's all about the numbers. What would you do differently if you were to flip again? I've learned that it's best not to use your own money. <laughs> <laughs> so... Um, what I do is I borrow from a private lender mm. to help me with my flip. Mm -hmm. And then when it's time for me to refinance, um, which is within three months or whenever I finish the flip, I can pay them back straight away. Yeah. 
And that really helped me with my cash flow. Yeah. Yeah. So, so with your private lender, is that someone mm. you know or is it a venture capitalist? Uh, someone I know. Yeah, we draw a contract. I give them an agreement. I ask them, look, can I borrow this set amount of money for this set of time and I will pay you this set amount of interest? Does that sound good to you? At the moment in the savings account, they're getting 1% if they're lucky. Yeah, yeah. And this is just friends or? Um, yep. yeah, friends. Okay. This agreement is actually a business agreement. I'm not, I'm, he, she's not doing me a favor or I owe her something. It's pretty much a mutual agreement. Mm. She earns money from it. Mm -hmm. And so do I. Yeah. yeah. I guess, um, for example, as you know, when you get a construction loan, mm -hmm. it is a headache. Yeah. It's yes, it is. <laughs> too, many hoops, too many hoops you need to go through and they only give you money at the set point, you know? Yeah. And it just constricts you what you want to do. Mm -hmm. So, for example, I want to build a granite flat now. It's a it's $100,000. And that's why um, private lending is just the way to go. And that's what I've learned. Yeah. And with your contract, uh, you go through a lawyer? That's or, right. Yeah. How much is all the legal process? Um, the last one, they cost me up $250. That's really cheap. That's very mm, cheap. So the, the lawyer would um, draft up a template that she or he already has. Yeah. Um, we both agreed on it, signed, done. Fantastic. So what would you tell people who are a bit hesitant about property investing and or flipping a house? You can wait on the sideline all you like, but the train is not going to stop for you. Um, you may make a mistake. That's okay. You're going you're gonna to do so much better afterwards. And like, yeah. like I did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're going to be in it to win it. Yeah, that's right. And it's not even gambling. It's <laughs> A safe bet. Yeah. As long as you arm yourself with the knowledge of the suburb, the statistics, you're buying at, the, at a good price in a good location, um, you, there's not much risk involved. Do you have any side hustles? No, I thought house flipping my side hustle. <laughs> <laughs> it's taken all my time. So how many properties do you currently own? Um, I own four commercials. And three residentials. Wow. And the commercials, are they all offices or shops or a bit of both? A bit of both. Yeah. Yeah. And that's giving you a positive cash flow? From day one. Wow. Yeah. It, it's just a phenomenal way. And um, I know people are saying COVID businesses are dying and they're just um, breaking the contract and the leases. And I'm just like, not in my case. My tenants have been fantastic. There are businesses that can withstand COVID. Mm -hmm. um, and thanks to that, they have seen me through these difficult times where my business had to shut down. Mm. But I'm still regularly receiving rent from, from them. With the shops, because yes. shops can be very, very expensive. Yes, that's right. Are they all on loan? Yes, absolutely. Has it, has it given you equity? Has it increased in price? Absolutely. Um, as with the resi going up, so do commercials. And um, my only tip for you is, at the moment, offices are in abundance in the inner city. Mm. And something needs to be unique to set your office apart from every other offices in the complex. Mm. Yeah. Um, and you need to look at the vacancy rate as well. Yeah. 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 I, I do own uh, an office space, but it's at the front and has a grass, I mean, a glass frontage. Oh, okay. When cars drive past, you see them straight away. They're not mm. called retail retail, but mm. um, it's about, um, yeah, just be careful when mm. you buy something that is already in abundance. That's a good advice. Now let's talk about your personal finance. Do you mm -hmm. budget? Um, I think I do. Uh, I, I don't um, have a spreadsheet or anything like that. Okay. But yeah. um, I guess when my when I have my income coming in, I just put fifty percent of it away straight away. Wow. Yeah, and then whatever I have left, it's just to pay bills, etc. It's yeah. subconscious, right? Not. Um, yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, 
That's mm-hmm. great. Do you have any money saving tips? Yes. Okay. When you first start off, whenever you get paid, you need to put away a quarter of it. It needs to be scheduled automatically. And then you can do whatever you want with that 75%. And then slowly build up that automatic scheduling. Like um, I think I started with, you know, 10% and then, wow, that's easy, 25. Mm -hmm. And then eventually got to 50% because I don't need, like, I don't need to spend too much. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Would you consider yourself to be frugal? No. (laughs) (laughs) Definitely a spender. Um, (laughs) That's why I'm working so hard to make money and... Because mm-hmm. I, I, there's a lot of things I want to buy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can keep up that lifestyle that you want. I know a lot of people, they're so, they overspend, but they can't right, yeah. make the money for that lifestyle. So I guess you have to reward yourself at the end of the day. Yeah. What else are you investing in, like shares or crypto? To be honest, I try to understand it. But it just goes over my head. Speaking of investing in stocks, you can get up to $150 worth of free stocks by visiting the referral link below for Stake, which is an online stock trading platform that trades numerous US stocks. Property is your thing. (laughs) Yeah, running a business, having a property, um, doing commercials, anything else is, yeah, it's a bit tricky. I, I just can't, I just can't get into it. Fair enough, fair enough. All right, Anne, are you ready for the lightning round? Yeah, sure, let's go. Okay. Do you think money can bring you happiness? 100%. What is the most expensive possession you own besides house? Um, Yeah, I own a Porsche uh, Macan GTS. I don't know anything about cars. How much is that worth? Um, I bought it secondhand for one hundred and fourteen thousand dollars. Oh, okay. Does that appreciate in price? Um, it actually stabilizes in price. Mm. Okay. So if I were to sell in two years' time, it will still be the same price. Wow. Porsche holds its value really well. Mm. Um, and yeah, I, um, that's why I make sure I only buy cars that are about two to three years old, mm. yep. where the dip is already done. The biggest yeah. dip. Yep. And then it will maintain. And then you, you pick the brands that really hold their value. Fantastic. If you had one at $20 million, what would you do? Okay. That's a lot of money. <laughs> thousand, uh, sorry, 10 million I want to put into property investing. The other 10 million, I'm going to spend it all. <laughs> How many things I want to do? Like um, maybe... Um, an apartment of, uh, with, you know, penthouse, Brangaroo, looking at the Harbour Bridge, um, going, traveling around the world, like five stars. I would, I'm, a, I'm a spender and, and I'd love to live life to the max. Wow. Love it. Would you trade $50 million for five years of your life? No. <laughs> because you see, um, the reason why we're making money is to buy time. Mm. Um, so that's, that's kind of contradicting what I'm trying to do. Warren Buffett or Oprah? Okay. Um, Warren Buffett, he's good at making money, yeah. but he's not very good at spending it. <laughs> that's true. That's so I don't true. resonate with that so well. Um, Oprah, on the other hand, she makes money by helping people. It's a fantastic, um, yeah, motto. I'd say Oprah. Elon Musk or Jeff Bezos? Okay. They both make tons of money. But Elon Musk is a real dreamer. And his aspirations is um, out of this world. Literally, um, right? <laughs> yeah, literally, right? Um, I don't, yeah, definitely not me. Uh, so if I do have to choose, it will be Jeff. And now, where can we find you on social media, Anne? Um, okay, so I only have Facebook and uh, Instagram. Mm-hmm. And I tend to show my flipping stories on Instagram. Oh, great. Um, 
and Nagasaki. I'll put the link down below. Thank you so much, Anne, for joining us this week on Mula Mula. Thank you. And that is it of this episode of Mula Mula. If you like this podcast, please share, like, and subscribe to my channel on YouTube. Don't forget to check out my links below to sign up for freebies. Let me know what you thought of this episode by visiting my Facebook page. Just search The Frugal Millennial. Thanks for listening.